So let's, uh, let's see who wanted to be first. I think uh, Nabil Fami wanted to be first. There you go. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm not sure I wanted to be first. You offered but I agree. to be first. <laughs> yes, he offered. Nobody wanted to be first. But that was the point. Okay. <laughs> Kindly offered. Let me first thank Terry for the kind invitation to be back here. It's always been a very informative event for me, and I've learned a lot from many of the panels. I want to also start by repeating what you just said. A month ago, or a little bit more, when I first got the invitation to come, I looked at the topic, and I frankly would have given you a completely different presentation. Because as an Egyptian, looking westwards, I see a failed state on my right in Libya. I see a failed state in Sudan southwards. There was no peace process. There was no, there was no violence, but there's no peace process looking eastwards between the Palestinians and the Israelis. Syria is still coming out of a nightmare. And then all the way down to uh, uh, Yemen and the tensions with Iran. There were a lot of problems. Uh, I won't focus on any of them, but let me simply say that I actually expect what happened in Gaza to have negative effects on all of these. Because on the one hand, there is clearly a regionalization of conflicts in the region with the major powers trying to figure out what role they want to play. And there's going to be an opportunity for players in all of these confl conflicts to try to get as much more leverage out of their positions than in the past when uh, we weren't focused uh, on the Gaza issue. The second point I'd make is, uh, and I've gone hoarse trying to make this over the years, is never assume that the Arab-Israeli conflict is over only because there's no active bloodshed occurring. Uh, and it's something that we kept hearing over and over again. The Palestine issue is not important. It's not a pressure point. It's not a priority. Uh, it always breaks out unless we solve the problem between Arabs and Israelis. The question will never be whether or not there will be violence. It will be when is the next cycle of violence. Uh, whether it's on the previous conflicts I mentioned or on the most recent conflict, countries in the region have to have better governance. And when I mean that, I mean not only domestically and regionally, but also in terms of respect for international law in their international relations. Unless that becomes the focus of how we operate and how we move, the idea of a balance of power, that's always a variant. And the problem here is that it's not always a balance of power between nation states. It's a balance of power between who's ready to, to cause more damage and more pain on the other side. Uh, when one looks at what happened recently, clearly there is a higher profile for non-state parties. And clearly there is an, an argument being presented, I don't agree with it, that irrespective of the issue, revenge and collateral damage inhumane collateral damage is acceptable in order to respond to what is considered to be the initial uh, source of conflict. My, re my point really here is we need to have an Arab-Israeli uh, process that leads to Arabs and Israelis living peacefully in the Middle East. And at the core of that is the Palestinians and the Israelis. Uh, that will require an ending of occupation and it will require to be able to have the national identity for Israelis and for the Palestinians in viable sovereign states. Uh, I've heard very frequently that two-state solution is dead or difficult. I argue it's difficult much more now than in the past. I don't think it's dead and I so I hope it's not dead because I don't see a one-state solution 
as a viable alternative to solve the problem. A one-state solution means that the Israelis and the Palestinians forego their desire for a singular national identity and decide on a common identity between them, and I don't see that happening peacefully. It may become a one-state reality, but then you will have continuous conflict between these two peoples because it can't be a reality that ends up giving priority to one state versus the others. Now let me just for a very few minutes, my country started the peace process with Israel uh, after embarking on a war, which was intentionally started with the explained objective of starting negotiations. That's, I'm talking about the 73 war. Uh, and we were the first to sign a peace agreement. That being said, even back then in the 70s, part of our agreement with the Israelis had a framework agreement for, to create a threshold for an agreement between Palestinians and Israelis. What happened in the last five we four weeks is really going to the core of Arab-Israeli hatred and anger. And if we start to light that fire again, we will all pay a very severe price for it. Nation states, as angry as they may be, have to respect international law, have to respect international humanitarian law, and including uh, uh, the laws that govern war. And we need to go back to trying to establish a two-state solution. Now, is that possible now? I'll sum it up in very few words. We need to deal on an emergency basis with a crisis management situation. The continuous deaths of civilians every day, destruction of Gaza, about 25, if not 30 percent, completely destroyed, cannot be the basis for the relationship between Arabs and Israelis. For every combatant that is killed, you are planting the seeds for 10 more who have lost family and will want revenge and retribution in the future. So uh, the, we need to get a ceasefire, not for the ceasefire's sake, but just to control the, 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 the viciousness of the combat with the objective of ultimately then moving on to a conflict resolution phase, which has to be essentially a two-state solution. I would argue that this requires an Arab initiative. We need to take the issue in our own hands. And it also requires responsibility of the major states uh, globally, be they the Americans, I just came from China, the Chinese, uh, or anybody else, to go back to how do we bring the parties, the Israelis and the Palestinians in particular, back to a negotiating table. If they don't believe in the end result, this will be my closing comment, having done these negotiations for most of my career, this is not the best time to start this project by any standard, whether, and whether it's uh, respect to the leadership paradigm on the Palestinian side or the Israeli side. But we can't afford not to. And I therefore suggest that dealing with the crisis situation is imperative, but then what we need to put to the Israeli and Palestinian center, to the public, is not an interim solution. We need to actually offer them what are the elements in as much detail as we can of closure. Where will the two-state solution actually be? How do we deal with the different components of that? And that will ultimately achieve for Palestinians what they want in terms of national state, and it will achieve for the Israelis what they are even calling for in the midst of combat, which is security for Israelis in the future. So let me just throw out those two points. This is not the time for 
continue with violence. You're, we're planting the seeds of non-state party violence for the future. And it's not the time for incremental proposals uh, because they aren't enough to bridge the pain and get over what's happened over the last few weeks. Thank you very much. Now, finally, thank, thank you very much. Uh, you've touched on a number of points which I'm sure we're going to be picking up on over the next uh, hour or so. Uh, what's, what came through for me, most importantly, it's not just an Israeli-Palestinian issue. There's the Arab-Israeli issue that needs to be addressed as well. And there may be room within this in seeking solutions and in, in these processes that you've uh, s suggested need to be pushed forward. There may be a role for other actors outside the region uh, from around the world uh, to play a diplomatic role. Thank you very much.